Great. So thank you for giving up your lunch break to come and come to my session. I appreciate it. So my name is Grace Jansen and I'm a developer advocate at IBM and I'm here to hopefully inspire and encourage you guys to help improve the diversity within our tech industry. So we had a really amazing keynote this morning from Audrey who really highlighted the issues that we have within our tech community in the lack of diversity we have. That's both with females, um, with gender, with um, skin color, with sexuality. We have a severe lack of diversity. Um, now, being a female in the tech industry, I have a huge passion for increasing the number of females who are in it. So I've been involved in a load of projects that we've run at IBM to try and improve this. So I'm going to show you three different examples on varying scales that hopefully you can maybe take inspiration from or copy or please take my resources and use them uh, to help increase that diversity and encourage more women into STEM. So what's the problem we face? Well, Audrey's highlighted this, but I'm going to go over it. So in the UK, at GCSE level, it's about a 50-50 split. And in fact, statistics show that girls actually outperform males um, at GCSE level. That drops to 24% at A level. So that's when we turn in the UK, we take our A levels when we're about 18. And that drops even further to only 7% in higher education. So I'm referring to university apprenticeships, etc. That's a huge drop. You've gone from 50 to 7. And that drops even more when you start asking them if they want to go into a career in technology specifically. Only 3% of girls that were, that were surveyed said that they'd consider a career in technology as their first choice. That's tiny, 3%. And that continues. Um, so, for example, there was a study done uh, by Microsoft where they actually showed that of the two in five UK females who actually had an interest in STEM, uh, they didn't act two in five of them didn't actually end up working in STEM at all. So even if they showed an interest, they didn't go into it in the end. Um, and the study by Microsoft showed that this interest tended to drop off when, between the ages of 11 and 16. So what we did at IBM was we tried to set in motion a series of initiatives to target that age range to really try and improve the number of girls continuing with that passion in STEM and technology. And why do we care about this? Why does it make a difference? Well, having a diverse workforce actually helps us with all of the above. So the European Commission did a study where they suggest that by 2020, there'll be a shortage of 500,000 jobs in the tech industry, and that by closing the gender gap, will actually increase um, the GDP of pretty much every nation. So they reckon by closing the gender gap, there'd be an 820 billion euro investment um, into the European Union economy by 2050. That's not that far away, and that's a huge amount of money. So we can increase um, the annual GDP. It also helps us to tackle these job shortages that I mentioned, and it helps us with greater innovation and better product design. So has anyone ever used the Apple Health app? No, okay. Well, if you've ever used the Apple Health app, when they first announced it, they said that they were me measuring every metric you could possibly need in order to try and pick up uh, diseases or conditions early on. Now, when they first released it, they claimed they had covered everything. What they hadn't included was a period tracker. And most females know that actually um, stopping a, a girl who has their period stopped is often the early warning signs for various conditions um, and diseases. So, for example, it's one of the first signs of someone becoming anorexic, which is a really common condition in young females. So these apps have better product design when there's a more diversity on their product teams. Because if there'd been more females working on that application, they might have raised this issue and they wouldn't have come across that issue when they're released. So by having greater diversity, we have greater innovation, better product design, we tackle these job shortages, and we increase our GDP. But how do we get there? How do we increase our diversity? So this is the first initiative that we did. It's one of our most recent initiatives. We teamed up with Disney, um, and anyone know Disney Marvel, Captain Marvel films? Great, I've got nerds in the audience. So with the release of Captain Marvel film, we wanted to try and capture the audience that they target um, and get them interested in technology and using technology. So what we did is we actually sent out an open invitation to any girls aged between 11 and 14 in the UK to come up with an idea to use AI to solve pr any problem that they'd come across in their daily life. Um, and we picked, we actually, we were only expecting about 50 applicants. We actually got 200 applications to our competition. 
Now, each of those groups had a minimum of two people and up to five. So if you think about the minimum number of girls interested in using AI, that's a minimum of 400 girls in the UK interested. So it's clearly something that they want to get involved in. Now, of those 200 entries, we chose our top 10 and we invited them to come to London for a day where we basically gave them training, introduced them to key concepts and introduced them to mentors to help them through the next six weeks. So we introduced them to machine learning, we introduced them to AI, we introduced them to our Watson capabilities and importantly to Scratch. Anyone heard of Scratch before? Yeah, fantastic. So we use Scratch in order to make it a bit easier for the girls um, so they don't have to use actual programming languages like Python and they can quickly and easily get started with using AI. So in the next six weeks, we gave each team a business and a technical mentor. And those technical mentors were technical people in IBM. So they were product developers, they were testers, um, architects, and they helped the girls to basically turn their abstract ideas into real life creations. So in just six weeks, these 11 year olds had built proof of concept demos that they were able to show us and show off at the finals. So it came to the finals and we invited the girls to come back to London and show what they'd done. So through their business mentors and the storytelling workshops that Disney had provided, they were able to tell a compelling story and then show a technical demo of them actually using Watson services and AI in order to solve these problems. And they were not easy problems. These girls were trying to tackle knife crime, how to make our streets greener, how to help people with mental health disabilities and disorders. Uh, the group that I was mentoring, for example, uh, the girls on the top left, sorry, right for you there, uh, they were actually creating a pair of glasses that used visual recognition and voice to text, text of speech, sorry, um, to be able to describe the world around someone who's visually impaired. So they weren't easy things to tackle. And as adults, we struggled to come up with solutions. So it was incredible to be able to see these girls go from zero um, all the way through to creating a proper proof of concept and having hands-on experience using programming languages, front-end development tools, and AI, importantly. So I think we have time for the quick video. So this was the result of um, what we were able to create. A more gender equal world. At GCSE level, girls make up only 20% of computing students. At A level, this is even lower, at only 12%. This trend continues into the workplace. We're on a mission to change that. This partnership between IBM, Marvel Studios and STEM Learning proactively addresses the gender imbalance. Throughout this challenge, these girls have been using AI working with IBM to tackle real world problems. From a very basic knowledge of programming and STEM, you can achieve quite a lot. This competition is a way of IBM passing on our passion for solving problems with STEM to the next generation. For over a century, IBM has worked with clients across multiple industries to lead the way in solving real-world problems. Girls like this are the future leaders. We can change the world! So you can see, dramatic, I know, but you can see that through the use of this competition, we were able to affect directly the girls who were involved, but by making videos like this and sharing it on our social media and Disney social media, we're showing that girls like um, the girls that may be watching this have been able to create products like this and are using tech, and they're now becoming the role models. So we're able to put them into a role model position for other girls their age to show, yeah, girls are using tech. This is an industry for you guys. Please come and join us and continue your passion. So that's obviously, that was a huge scale operation, right? It took a lot of money, it took a lot of resources. Not everyone can do a competition on that scale. So here's an example of a competition that we run every year um, in our development labs in Hursley, which is on a much smaller scale. So this has been running for eight years, and what we do is we invite about 11 different local schools to bring students in, uh, female students in, to basically have a, a couple of days in the IBM labs coding and learning new skills and making a project. So we, uh, we have about 90 students who participate. So again, not as big a, a scale, but by having uh, the workshop run on two separate occasions, we can increase the number of girls that we're able to affect. And what we do is we run this workshop to be able to A, inspire them to continue their passion, 
B, we give them both soft skills and hard skills. So we teach the girls presentation skills, team building skills. We deliberately mix up the schools so that they're working with children and with other girls their age they've never met before. Because that's real life. That's what happens when you join a job. You have to learn these skills to be able to be successful in your future career. So we teach them soft skills, even if the girls don't go into tech, that will hopefully still be useful. But we also teach them programming skills. So we teach them basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And by teaching them these languages, we're able to help them build a really simple website that they're then able to host on the cloud. It's not the only thing we do during the day. We also help them run design thinking workshops. So they're really thinking about the project that they're building, why they're building it, and why it's important. We also run a really fun uh, murder mystery. So it's essentially a murder mystery where we get a bunch of guys from the IBM developer labs dressed up uh, for the day, pretending that they're involved in this murder, and they have to solve code puzzles to be able to solve who solved the murder. It's basically showing that coding isn't just about building things or um, product design. It can just be fun as well. So we run these fun activities. Uh, we run the design thinking, and we run the coding workshops. And what it results in is in a day, literally a day, they're able to build these websites and solve a problem um, with a product idea. We also included, um, in recent years, we've included this IT careers session, which has helped introduce the girls to careers and to roles in technology that they didn't even know existed before. So we introduced them to architects, to project leaders, to testers, to pure developers, to project managers, to offering managers, to people managers. And there's roles in there that they had no idea they could go into if they went into the tech world. We basically use this session to show them it's not just coding in a dark room. And you don't have to have done it since the age of zero. We deliberately try and pick a diverse range of backgrounds of the mentors that we invite. So we invite people from marketing backgrounds. I myself come from a biology degree, and yet now I'm a coder. It's to show the girls that regardless of their interests or regardless of like, the choices that they get made in school, so for example, my school didn't offer coding, that's OK, because you can learn it later. So it's to show that it really is a diverse range of people who come into this industry, and there is a diverse range of roles to fill when you join this industry. And this is the feedback we got from the day. This is the most important part for me. This is the impact we were able to have with just that two-day event. So one of the um, best bits of feedback that I got was a girl came up to me at the end and said, oh, I really thought I wanted to go into physics, but now I just want to join IBM. It's like, great, do go to school for a while, finish your GCSEs, and then come back to us. Continue that career in, in STEM. Continue learning about the different career paths that you could take in this industry. So we had a really fantastic impact on a lot of the girls, and a lot of them asked if they could come back in the future and do more, which is fantastic. Now again, takes resources, takes time. What if you don't have a whole two days or you can't invite kids to your office? Well, we actually run other workshops which are only an hour long. So if you only have an hour to spare and you know a local school that you could visit um, who have computers, then this is an activity you could run yourselves. So this is our machine learning for kids. Uh, one, of the, one of my colleagues in IBM Hursley actually made these. They're completely open source worksheets that use a combination of Scratch and our Watson services to teach kids about AI and machine learning. So Scratch is basically a drag and drop language. So super easy from kids from the ages of like seven all the way up to 14 is usually where we target it. And they build different things. They can build their own chatbot. They can build a, a machine learning model to play rock, paper, scissors against them. It's basic tasks like that that teach the kids about machine learning and the, about the, the items that they use in their everyday life. It's amazing seeing a kid realize that the Alexa in their living room is actually just basically what they've just coded. It's fantastic being able to show them it's not some complicated box, and they actually start to understand the technology within it. And we're also able to teach them important machine learning uh, objectives, so things like bias within their training data and the importance of having a good set of training data to base your model on. So we're able to do this through machine learning. Uh, that's the website if you do want to use those worksheets, and it's in about 20 different languages um, if English isn't one that you want to use. OK, I've spoken a lot about examples that we've had and maybe worksheets that you can use. But what if you don't have time to run your own event? Well, there are tons of charities and organizations that actually already organize these. So if you don't necessarily have time to organize it yourself, you can participate in ones that other people organize. So uh, STEM ambassadors, for example, organize tons of different like um, uh, 
ambassador meeting. So kids get to come and meet people in different role models and in different industries. Or you could go and participate in code events for kids, like DevOps kids, for example. So there are tons of opportunities for you to get involved. If you do, however, want to run it yourself or you want some more information or any of the resources I've mentioned, please do get in contact with me or visit any of the links uh, that I've listed here. They're the ones that we tend to use for our events. So I hope that I've inspired you that it is possible to even do a small amount to increase the diversity in our industry and that it's a really important activity that we should be getting involved in. Thank you very much.